we've worked hard to get some new varieties this year that are more uncommon. So today we're going to talk about the more unusual instead of the um, mainstream type Japanese maples. Laurel is going to be helping me here and she Hello. often throws in little tidbits about design as well because she's a designer so you can focus those types of questions towards her. I'm passing the buck here. Um, so Rebecca yeah, do you want to start us off with one? Yes, I would love to start us off with Acer Palmatum. Ah, here it is. Peaches and cream. Now I wish we could show you some of the new growth, but the new leaves come on a peachy pink color and then fade to this wonderful netted green. Um, the red samaras are very conspicuous um, and give it sort of a delicate as if somebody had hung little decorations on this Japanese maple. The fall color again is a pastel uh, pinky peach and gold. Wow. So it's a lovely Japanese maple. It's an upright arching form. It will grow to about eight feet um, and uh, just a very delicate Japanese maple. Great. Well, I'm going to be talking about <coughs> um, Acer Palmatum Coral Pink, and it's right here. And this is a new one as well. What I like about this is it, it's multi-interest, and it stays smaller, so it's great for either a container or for a small garden. Uh, in about 10 years, it'll get about 6 feet tall. And it's great because the new growth is this fantastic mm, kind of orangey pink. So the margins are pink. And then it matures into this green with kind of a green and white speckled. The fall color, again, is more of an orangey color. And um, yeah, the stems are interesting too because they're kind of that coral color. So a nice small maple with, uh, you know, easy to fit into an already packed garden. The next one is this bold chocolate colored Japanese maple. It's Acer Palmatum, sorry, Acer Palmatum Ijima Sanago. Whoa. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, the new growth comes on this sort of toasted orange burgundy um, and then changes to this almost chocolate colored. Um, Sanago means dusted. So over the course of the summer, you're going to get speckling of green and sometimes bronze on these brown leaves. Now the effect of this beautiful chocolate covered bold leaved variety against the sort of grass green and limey green branches is amazing in the garden. It's, uh, it grows to about 12 feet tall um, and is hardy to zone 5. The fall color on this is orange and red. It's a great, hard to find variety. So this Japanese maple, it's really nice to have because I've had a couple of people on a waiting list for it. So it's great to be able to finally offer it. It's called Acer Palmatum Benny Maple. And it's great because a lot of people who love to bonsai love this maple. Um, as you prune it, the leaves will stay a nice smaller size and it makes a great um, maple again for a smaller pot. This one will get about eight feet tall in about 10 years. The nice thing about it is its name means um, red-haired, dancing red hair. <laughs> <laughs> dancing red-haired girl or? <laughs> yeah, red-haired dancing girl. Sorry, I kind of got that mixed up. So um, that's kind of nice and it's the new growth that is fantastic. It's really, really bright red um, here kind of stays that color as it unfrills and then it turns into this green but the veins on the leaf still stay red so you get a little bit of contrast there. Um, the fall color again is a brighter red than this so it's that nice fiery traditional red color that a lot of people look for in fall ja fall color in Japanese maples. So um, and the petioles on the leaves are fantastic too with the red. It's all these little things that end up making a difference when it grows into a beautiful specimen in the garden. The next Japanese maple is Acer Palmatum Shin de Sojo. Uh, it's a smaller tree um, growing to about eight feet, uh, smaller in a container. The new growth comes on this fire engine red uh, and then fades to green. 
The fall colors are orange and red on this tree. Um, the branches are a nice toasted burgundy color, giving it some winter interest as well. There is always something going on with this tree. It's a real eye catcher in the garden. And in a woodland setting, um, with a grouping of heuchera and hosta underneath to pull the burgundy color down, it would just be amazing. Um, this one is an interesting one and gets a lot of looks. It's, a, it's so new on the market, they're actually not too sure how tall it's going to grow, but it's gonna, they're estimating about 8 feet tall in 10 years. And <clears throat> a similar width, or slightly smaller width, it's called Acer Palmatum Olson's Frosted Strawberry. So it's just um, kind of a fun name. It obviously gets its name from this strawberry red new color. And the other interesting thing um, that's unique about this maple is it's very deeply loped. So when the new growth comes out, they're kind of a little bit gnarled and a little bit twisted, this leaf. So it adds a little bit of interesting um, detail there. The leaves mature to uh, more of a pinkish and then eventually you get this color, which is kind of like a silvery pink on the green and all the veins are defined in that darker deeper green so it's kind of a really catches the eye as something unique. This one is Acer Palmatum Crimson Carol and it's another finely or deeply lobed leaf, uh, lobed sorry. The new growth is actually an orange burgundy um, with the undersides of the leaves being more of the orange and the upper side being more of the burgundy. It fades to this lovely sort of chocolate burgundy color as well. Um, and the effect burgundy leaves again on the nice grass green branches is really stunning in a garden. It's a slower grower to about 8 to 10 feet um, and the fall color is bright, bright red. Um, it's just a lovely upright Japanese maple. <coughs> So this one is called Hefner's Red, and what's nice about this is the traditional burgundy one that everybody loves. A lot of people will plant the burgundy leafed blood good Japanese maple in their garden. And you know, it's just a great contrast, whether it's a contrast with your house or a contrast with all the other green plants in your garden. What makes this one unique is its new growth is more of a fiery red. Its fall color is also more bright and it's very upright and vase shaped. So if you have more of a narrow spot in the garden, this is, the structure of this plant will be more upright than width growing. So it's got that nice sturdy vase shaped, great fall color, and then this beautiful dark, dark, almost black foliage in the summer. And it's, it retains that color too. Some of the Japanese maples can kind of fade out a bit. This one retains that, so. The younger branches also have this great sort of silver and burgundy furrowing, which is really interesting to look at in the winter time. It's a spectacular cool. one. This one might have to come home with me. <laughs> this is Acer Palmatum Ariadne. Um, what now, does that mean? Well, Ariadne <laughs> was the wife of the Greek god of wine Dionysus for all of you history buffs or, or myth buffs out there. Uh, the new growth comes on this just amazing sort of orangey pink fades to sort of a creamy pink color. The veining is very conspicuous in these deeply lobed leaves. Uh, then it carries this sort of veining on through the summer and in the fall the the colors go very much like the spring colors but with a brighter red margin around the leaf edges. What I really love about this Japanese maple is the contrast of the red sort of petioles, that's these little stems, against this sort of furrowed silvery bark. It's very much like the snake bark um, maple. Uh, it's just very interesting. This one is a neat one. It's, um, it's called Acer Palmatum Bayou or Bayou, and it's brand new on the market. I actually saw it for the first time at the Seattle Flower and Garden Show last February, and I was I was on the hunt to find it for us here at Arts. But um, why I love it 
is that it has this great kind of yellow with this orangey orangey pink outer margin in the spring and throughout the summer I guess when the new leaves are emerging and then the leaf just turns to more of a nice colored green but it's really shines a lot of people are familiar with the coral bark Japanese maple and this one is similar in its winter interest but it's got this almost sunshine yellow kind of yellow bark that and it has kind of a hint of orange to it so it actually looks like the sun is shining on it and it has that lovely warm hue of orange against this bright bright green and so again I think a real a real winner I think we're going to hear more about this maple it's um it's interesting it also stays quite small so it should stay under 10 feet for you and um, about half that width so this delicate looking Japanese maple is Acer palmatum Oregon fern upright Japanese maple with a leaf very much like the weeping finely dissected Japanese maple um, this one is sort of upright arching spectacular for containers um, the leaf color on it in fall goes to a burgundy and purple. It's really, really interesting. You can see right now, and the, a little bit of the new growth has some edging in that purple. Uh, it's just really finely textured. And if you underplant it in your pot with some glossy, big, bold leaved, uh, either burginia or um, Oh, even cyclamen with those lovely round leaves with the silver on them. I think that would look absolutely stunning. Uh, it's just, it is a great upright Japanese maple. Thanks for joining us today and learning about more of the exciting Japanese maples for 2012. Laurel and I learned a lot. Yes, I we think did. we're each going home with one. So Or two. <laughs> and just come in and visit. We have a great selection of them. And... You know, this is Arts Nursery, where there's more service, more selection, and more fun.